just an ass. And in time, this too shall pass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Jerry Petito taught the class. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Loves the answer, the greener grass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. One day at a time, free at last. When you don't know just what to do. Just what to do, just what to do. <laughs> if what you're feeling is really true. It's really true. Really Just keep your ideas safe and sound. Safe and sound, safe and sound. That's exactly how change is found. Change is found, change is found. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. And in time, this too shall pass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Jerry Petito taught the class. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Loves the answer, the greener grass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. One day at a time, free at last. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Jerry Petito Show on Hamilton Radio. Everyone who knows me knows I am the author of I'm Not an Addict, I'm Just an Ass. I'd rather be a smart ass than a dumbass. Because, guys, 30 years ago, I was a dumbass. But 30 years later, because of God, he saved my life. I am now a smart ass. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm going to tell you some really cool things that have happened since I first published this book. Um, really, really cool stuff from being asked to be interviewed on Hamilton Radio, then being asked to have a show, and now I'm on five networks, and I just revised my book in 2020, okay? So much more is in here. So much more is in here, because guys, listen, I want everyone to know I'm going to share something else with you, and there's a reason why. I'm going to be 60 years old in March, and 30 years ago, let's, let's think about that for one second. If I would have thought 30 years ago that this would be my life now, it would be crazy. It wouldn't even be, like, possible, right, what we think. So it doesn't matter how old you are. Okay, I became an author in my 50s, my first radio show in my 50s. I'm in the Hall of Fame internationally in my 50s. Think about that. I wanted to share that so that everybody out there feels like there's some hope because it doesn't matter. Don't put yourself in this so-called box or in a closet or I'm too old for this or I'm not good enough for this or I'm not or I'm powerless. No, you're not. You're not powerless over anything. Okay? So listen, I'm a recovery coach, a nutritional health coach. If you need help, my services are free. Get in touch with me. If there's a family member out there and you need to know how to deal with the family member, if you're an addict yourself, please reach out to me. Okay? I really, that's my calling. I want to help you. So having said that, I want to give a shout out to a sponsor I have. Okay? And, you know, Fire Team Designs. They just did a whole product line for me. And here's a stupid mask. I'd rather be a smart ass than a dumb ass, and you could even have your name put on it, okay? They do hats, they do tumblers, okay? They do mugs, t-shirts, sweatshirts, business cards, anything you want, but here's the cool part about it. They'll do silly, stupid things for you. Look what they've done for me, and they can put your name on anything. If you want one of my masks, I'd rather be a smartest than a dumbass because I think we all should be wearing this now. You can get your name put on it. All right? I know a lot of smart asses out there. So having said that, now, without further ado, I want to introduce a returning guest. He's no stranger to my show. Um, you know, I'm going to introduce him. And I, Nikki, all I want you to do is say hello. Because I'm going to read your poem that I wrote for you a few years ago, but I'm also going to read something I added that you didn't hear. Okay? So tell everyone your name. That's all I really want you to say. Say hi to everyone. Hello, world. I'm Nick the Balloonatic Rotundo. There you go. So I'm going to read the poem because then they'll know everything there is to know about you. Nikki, put your speaker up a little bit, I think. Just a little bit. Okay? All right. So here we go, guys. Facebook's amazing when used for all good. Incredible networking creates as it should. Growing up in Long Island City at 12, moving away, although New Jersey bound, left my heart there that day. 
One day I get a request on Facebook to join a group. You know you're from Long Island City, brought back memories on my stoop. I saw Nikki's post of his brand new license plate. First responder from 9-11, I reached out to him in faith. He posted, about docu he posted about a documentary he was asked to be part of. I needed to interview this guy. I started praying up above. I didn't think he'd remember because we were really young. Then he told me so much stuff, a song my heart now sung. My parents were godparents to his brother, aunt. He remembered so much and started to rant. Both my parents are gone, but Nick's mom is still here at 80. Well, how old is she now, Nikki? 84. Four and a half. <laughs> okay, 84 and a half, she still dances, living life without a care. The funny thing about this, when Nikki told his mom, being interviewed by Jerry, she blew up like a bomb. Don't you call her that, she said. Her dad was Jerry, don't be mean. I remember them so well. Her name's not Jerry, it's Geraldine. Brought back memories I'll never forget. Our childhood rocked, glad we remet. Brought tears to my eyes. I said, please let's meet. Live in studio, now this can't be beat. It's been 50 years, I kid you not. Never say never, just take your shot. Reconnecting with old friends has been incredibly great, not even knowing why in my book I saved this date. 9-11 is a day none of us will forget. The day we were attacked, our country under threat. Because I interviewed you on 9-11. My guest here today, haven't seen since we're kids, Nick the Balloonatic made all the grids. Nicky Rotondo, incredibly cool. We were born the same year and went to the same school. 1961, born a Brooklyn boy, 1965, Long Island City, he brought joy. 1022, 47th Road, my building owned by my dad. Nicky's family moved in, St. Mary's School to be had. Long Island City High School graduated 1979. You made their Hall of Fame, causing trouble in the line. 1982, New York Transit was your gig. Becoming a musician years later, making albums, go fig. Four. 2004, you added balloons. Nick the Balloonatic was born. Still driving and playing, three personalities are worn. You remind me of me, jack of all trades. That's who we are, life of accolades. Marrying Sally in 2010, reunited once more sweethearts back then. After 34 years, bus driving would end 2016, the retirement trend. Before your first check, quadruple bypass at hand. God kept you alive for more he has planned. Two stepdaughters you have, Kimberly and Jennifer is a big part. Although they're not blood, these girls own your heart. You also have a son and two granddaughters, too. You have more now, right? Three? Three. Three granddaughters, too. Like your, you like your children, but grandkids you love, it's true. The reason you're here, let's now make it known, you were a first responder to the day hatred was shown. Sergeant Vincent ben Venudo, Venudo of the NYPD commandeered commandeered your bus to help transport and flee. Becoming great friends still till today, shared that tragic memory filled with array. 9-11 was awful, but 9-12 was filled with hope. What the heck has happened? Back on a slippery slope? Enough is enough movement started my, by my friend Rich, hoping to bring all parties to unite without a hitch. Our country is in trouble, let's remember. 911 for emergencies was dialed to remind us what's been done. A coincidence, it's not. 9 11 was the plan, was hoping to unite children, women, and man. A huge thank you goes out to all of you involved, hoping all of your efforts created some resolve. Nick Rotondo, I'm honored to interview you, my friend. I hope that our reunion here on earth will never end. Nikki, my friend, I have no doubt the day that you finally meet God. The angels will open up the gates as Jesus will smile and nod. Now, that was the first one, but I added this because of what we're going to be talking about also today. Nick is now an author in kids' form is his book, I Am a First Responder, is the title. Now, let's take a look. It's all about 9-11, the day we all united. Nikki will never forget how New York was ignited. In a kid's version to help them see, Life is much better when love is the key. To become a writer out of the box, you must think. You need to become that one missing link. 
Let your mind wander and let your thoughts go. When your imagination is flying, your paper will know. For you to make magic with your paper and pen, get into your thoughts again and again. Don't be afraid to really step out. You got to tell the world what you're thinking about. If you're not creative or just don't know how, just pull out your pad and start writing now. Rumor has it about book two, I think Nikki is writing this book for you. There you go, baby. Jerry, what's happening? How you doing, sweetheart? So listen, this is Nikki's book. Nick Raton, go ahead, I'll say Nick, but this is my Nikki. <laughs> this is his book. This is incredible. Jerry, and I want to tell everybody, I am so, I, I had jitters today. I'm honored, honored to be on your show again. Last time I was on, we had a ball, and I'm just honored that you called me. Are you kidding me? I'm honored. I'm the one who's honored. Are you kidding? You're a hero. You're a hero to everyone, okay? And I feel the same way about you, and I'm the one who's honored, and thank you. So let's talk a little bit real quick, because this is really a cool book. Tell, tell us about this book, first of all. Okay. Um, being quarantined and during this, this like tough time for everybody, I just one day was sitting at my desk and I just, I know it's the 20th anniversary of 9-11 and this year's 20 years. And I wanted to do something for the children. I didn't want to put the actual World Trade Center in there, you know, with the planes hitting and all that. I wanted to deliver a message of helping out when people are in need, no matter what, whether it's your mother, your father, your brother, sister, a stranger, help out when people are in need. And um, I wanted it to be colorful. I was gearing it more to kids like maybe eight years and younger. And, uh, and, and so that's what I did. And I found this uh, amazing illustrator, Joan Coleman from Colorado. And I reached out to her and, and she said, I'd, I'd love to do this. It sounds, sounds amazing. And I was just, you know, sitting at my desk one day and I'm joking around and I don't have to tell you about writing, Jerry, because you write amazing. Whatever guest you have on, the stuff you write is just, it flows. You know, once you start writing, it just keeps coming and coming and coming. And I tell people, I wrote this, it's a, it's a kid's story, but it's for children. I wrote it so fast, like I just sat down one day and said, I am a first responder. I never thought I'd be. It happened on 9-11, that day they called on me. I wrote that down and it just, it just started flowing. Then I started thinking of that day and you put in a paragraph here, you put in a paragraph here and you make it longer. Um, for people that want to write books, don't ever say you can't. Don't ever, I don't care how old you are. Jerry's going to be 60. I'm going to be 60. My first book at 60. My, my friends out there, wake up every day. Every day is a new day, and you could do anything. Anything you want, you could do. You could do it. And that, that's how this book came apart, uh, came, came uh, to fruition. And, and I'm just, I'm so happy. I have, I get calls every single day since the book came out. And by the way, I was on it. Two weeks ago, when, when it first came out, it was number four in the United States for children's books. And I'm, I'm on it. it it's it's going to be in the New York public, the Queens Public Libraries just bought them to put in the libraries. So folks, I'm honored to be here. I'm honored to be alive. Every day I look up above, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Wow. I, I just, you know what? I love your energy, man. I love it, okay? More people should have some of that, even a little piece of that, because everybody's been so depressed and we've lost people. We've lost people close to us. I've had friends commit suicide and attempting suicide. It's been a horrendous year. So I love your spirit. We need to hear that. Yeah. We, Jerry, there's, there's light. The light is coming. I, I know, you know, every day we wake up, that's another day that we're here. We have, there, there's light out there. And I, I just, uh, you know, I, I, I tell people all the time, uh, you know, uh, kindness. Just try to make one person happy. 
a day. Just try, do it, and it, it becomes natural. It just, it really becomes natural. I wake up every morning, and Jerry, I, listen, at 60 years old, we wake up in pain every morning. Our Isn't neck that crazy? Hurts. <laughs> back hurts. No matter how much you exercise, because I exercise, I do three miles every morning. No matter what, I wake up in pain, but just try this. I wake up, I sit up, and I smile. That's the first thing I do in the morning. I smile and I'm thankful that I'm here another day. I really am. I had quadruple bypass. I was a 9-11 first responder, you know, and I'm just, I'm thankful for every day. Tomorrow is never guaranteed. Enjoy every day that you're here. Negativity, take out. Positivity, bring in. Your face is gonna hurt with good, good stuff from smiling all day. <laughs> You know, I'm listen, you just brought back a silly memory that I have to share. Okay. I do my best to smile and laugh and tell jokes and be silly. Okay? I do my best. I don't care. People say to me, but a tragedy just happened. How are you? And I was like, listen, good comes out of tragedies as well. We have to look at things like, you know, maybe God helped you and you didn't even know it. Okay, by getting you out of a situation, whatever it is. Okay. But I had my poker league for many years, right? And we were in, a, we were at a game at, at a bar restaurant and I'm walking around giving chips and say, you know, answer this silly question. I'll give you a free chip, whatever. Well, I'm going to mention his name because I absolutely love this young man. His name is Marquise and he used to play in my league all the time. And we're still in, you know, we're still friends and all that. And he used to tell me 10 years ago. I'm, I'm going to ask you to marry. He, he's my daughter's age, okay? He might even be a little younger than my daughter. And he would say to me, I'm going to ask you to marry. I said, listen, do me a favor. Forget now. But when I'm 60, I want that proposal. He comes over and he goes, why are you laughing and giggling? When are you not happy? And I'll never forget that. Everybody cracked up. And do you know that he reached out to me and we were laughing about it. I'm like, you know what's happening, right? He's like, I remember, because I'm going to be 60. I'm like, I want that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Jerry. to say that. Why you, are you laughing all the time and smiling? You have to. And, it, and it's funny that you say that, because when I had my quadruple bypass, okay. you know, you start thinking and you have to take care of things in case something does happen. Yes. So I told my wife, I said, honey, if God should want me and I won't be here tomorrow, I would like a closed coffin because I want people to remember me, me for too. the happiness, the smile. Yep. I don't want them remembering me that last time. I, and she, was, she said, really? I said, okay, if you decide that you want it open, I want my arm electronically done, <gasps> sitting in the coffin like this. Okay. I said this way, people will come in and start laughing and go, look at this. He's dead and he's still making people laugh. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, I live every day. My son once said to me, we were walking down the street and he said to me, you know, dad, I notice every time we pass people, there's, there's like a big grin on their face, like when they see you. And I said, isn't that a light, lot nicer than saying, oh, here comes that, you know, that, that jerk, that idiot. So I like, I like people just smiling at me. You know what I mean? Laughing. And I, and I will do anything. If you guys ever follow me on Facebook, I will do anything for a laugh. I like to make people laugh. I like when people, if I do a crazy video with the weather or something, and people write me private messages, I really needed that. You know? And I feel like, yeah. I, I'm helping somebody, and, and yeah. this, is, this is what I want to do. I want to I wanna reach out and, and help people and, and make people happy. Nick, I say this kidding, but it's true. I should have been beat up a million times because I stopped strangers, okay? I stopped. You're going to crack up at this. They had to be in their 80s. They were walking in the hospital parking lot. I was going to see my dad at the time, and he, he had a cane, and she's – getting in front of him and he's yelling at her, you're going to make me trip, this and that. Well, I couldn't help myself. I'm in the front of them. I turn around and I go at them 
And I, she was cracking up. I'm going, sweetie, come on, you can leave her. You can marry me. Come on, I'll walk in better. I'll walk in. You won't trip if I'm walking you in, you know? She was like, take them. Please take them. And he grinned. And I can't help myself at times. Yeah. It, but it, it makes you, and your heart feels good, right? Your heart feels good. And that's why. And, and I know people are suffering from anxiety. Yeah. People are yeah. suffering from some yeah. depression. It's a thing you have to work at. You really got to work at it. And believe it or not, if you start training yourself to make everything, you know, not 100% positive, make it right. this positive. And, and you start getting that positive and you start living, you know, more positive, making people laugh. And, and this is what I want to do. It makes me feel good. This is why... I mean, Jerry, even before we went on air, we're laughing here like, like two kids. And this is, this is what life's about. We're here. Make the best of it. Enjoy it. Just, just go. Things are going to get better for everybody. So, all right. Let's touch base on your book again, and then I want to talk about balloons. Sure. So, all right. So, this is a, I want to let everyone out there know this is a beautiful book. Okay. I love what Nikki did with this. And I do have permission to call him Nikki because I've known him as Nikki. But I love what Nikki did with this book. And children will love this. They will love you reading this book to them. They will feel really happy and good. And, and, and I don't want anyone to think that they're not going to because they will. Okay, this is a beautiful, amazing book, everyone. Come on, give it a shot. Order this book. Having said that, Let's talk about your balloons, you balloonatic. <laughs> balloons? You mean I do balloons? Let me see. Let me see. Next okay. There we go. For the next segment, I'll have to. I'll have to wear yeah. it. How, how's right. that? And what about the hat? I love the hat. Let's see it, baby. You throw oh. kisses. <laughs> okay. I mean, this is crazy. This is crazy. So show us some. Of, I see some balloons in that corner. Show us some of your work. Yeah. Um, what happened was I just I I'm doing because of the the pandemic. Um, I'm actually sponsored by the Queens Library because mm -hmm. I normally do shows all year. So now mm -hmm. the Queens Library said, let's let's do. Um, since you wrote a book and you're always talking about books, we're going to sponsor you and you're going to do school shows. So now schools have been reaching out and I talk to them about the importance of reading. And I love, I love reading. And I'll just show you, these are some of my favorite books. Jamie Lee Curtis wrote this book, Where Do Balloons Go? Which I absolutely love. This is another, yeah, this is another book. Ready for this? What's my wife's name? Sally. Look at the name of this book. For real? Straight Balloon Adventures. No, and for real. Yeah, it's a great book. And this book, I have for years, it was published in 1956, The Red Balloon. And if you remember, as kids, they used to show this movie at libraries and schools. That's right. That's and, right. And, and it's, a, it's a great book. And I collect balloon books. I love them. Uh, I love to read. Uh, and, and I was doing a show right before we went on air. Um, for a school, and I'll just show you, like, I made Olaf, yeah. I built Olaf uh, uh, front, and I, I teased the kids, I was showing Jerry before, where is this, I make believe that I'm fishing, like this, and this is my fishing line, and then I go, and I catch a fish, and uh, it make, makes them laugh, I do like uh, someone that looks like that's crazy to me, okay? You know, Paw Patrol. And who else is here? Oh, yeah. These are all I try to do I try to do characters that the kids could relate to. That's incredible. And uh this is this guy is popular uh, with uh, <laughs> with with the kids. And you know it's um yeah, you know, you know this guy, you met him, right? Ah. Oh my goodness. So you could swing them around, or and then I teach them how to build stuff, and so it's 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 a lot of fun. Here, here, look, this is a space head. Look, ah, it's an alien, and then they you can spin them around with your head. So I, I mean, I love, I just love doing it, 
and on I can't wait to get back into theaters. Um, I do theaters, you know, two, three, four hundred kids, and to hear that laughter when I'm doing these shows via like Zoom or Google Meets, um, I could see their faces and I see them like hysterical, but I don't hear them. And and their faces are getting into my heart, but I want to hear them. And I, I just can't wait to hug the kids again because at the end of the show, they're, they think you're this larger-than-life character. Meanwhile, to me, they're the larger-than-life character to me. And I just, I just love them. I love kids. My grandkids, I got three now, three granddaughters. My grandchildren, like I, I told you once before, I like my kids, but I love my grandkids. I That's love right. my That's grandkids. right. They're the best. Well, the very first time, because it was in the poems that we that I interviewed you was on 9-11. Do you remember that? Yes. And um, I saved that date before you and I connected. And I remember talking about that on that show. And we were live in studio. And I remember saying something just told me I needed to save that date. And then here that was. That was incredible to me. I, I could still remember our very first conversation and we started talking and I kept saying, uh, is your father Jerry and yeah. Lucy? And you were, yeah. I said, we live downstairs from you. We live in my dad's apartment building. Road. We lived on the first floor. You lived up, and y your parents were, may, may they rest? They got parents to my brother, Anthony. Oh, wow. Our parents were very close. So crazy. It, it's not, and then we didn't see each other for, oh God, 40 yeah. something years maybe? Yes, it was 50 years. And, and, and look, I mean, now, now, like when you call, my heart goes like this. I said, my friend, yeah, I love Jerry. I love you. Yeah. And now but, we're connected. We had a lot of friends from Long Island City watching that show, remember? They were calling in too. They were, call, they were calling in, yes. And now tomorrow, I have to tell my mother that I was on Geraldine's show. That's right, Geraldine. It's Jerry's show because she, her name is not Jerry. Oh, that's so, you know what's so funny? I hated my name, Geraldine, but like your mom saying it, I feel like heartfelt with it. Yeah. You know, and, and I just I don't know. Beautiful. She can and call to me. listen to you because everybody from Long Island City called me Nikki. Hey, Nikki, Nikki, Nikki. Do, our friend Donna Law, Nikki, Jeannie Law, Nikki. Uh, everybody called me Nikki. And uh, it's Tina. 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 Uh, Tina Manetta. Yeah, oh, great, so great neighborhood, 7th Street. They called it 47th Road. We called it 7th yeah. Street. And, and it, the Amadeos. I mean, and the Amadeos. Amadeos. They, were they were watching us on Facebook last time. That's and Frankie it. said I was, Frankie, was too nervous yeah. to call in. <laughs> they were great, great family. The, the parents were great, oh. too. I, I love that. Charlie, Frankie, Paula, Lisa. Oh, I want to share something with you. Okay. Um, so Frankie moved back to Long Island City and he's in his parents' building and he did a favor for me and he went and took a photo of my dad's building for me to, like recently. Wow. That was, that was really cool. That was really cool. So I love yeah, that. They lived on the other side of Vernon Boulevard. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, all right. So let's talk a little bit about your balloon habit. <laughs> what really started that? I just want people to hear that story. Jerry, I, I say it's a blessing, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay, In of course. 1968, okay. my gerbil, my gerbil died. I had a gerbil Gilligan, and I was crying like a baby. And my father, rest his soul, my father, I think, got a little frustrated with my crying and said, uh, he had that heavy Italian accent, let's go get another ting. Another gerbil. He called it a thing. Let's yeah. all get another thing. And back then, if you remember, there were no no pet stores around. Like uh, my my parents didn't even have a car. They didn't oh. even have a car. Yeah, they didn't even have a car. So we moved to Fifty First Avenue. Then my father got his license very late in life. Uh, so we had the seven train at Vernon and Jackson. And my father said, 
Come on, we're going to go get another thing. Because there was a pet store on 32nd Street and 7th Avenue. Right? No, across the street from Madison Square Garden. Oh, oh, in New York. Yeah, yeah Manhattan. So we took the 7 train to Times Square. Times Square, we went upstairs and we took the train one stop to 34th Street, Madison Square Garden. We're coming up the steps. As we're coming up the steps, there's a priest there. And this is why I said this was my calling. There was a priest there. And he said, would you like tickets to the circus, which was at Madison Square Garden? And now for those of you who don't know Long Island City, the circus used to park their trains That's in right. Long Island City by Fink Bakery. And then they used to walk the elephants at 2 o'clock in the morning through the Midtown Tunnel and across 34th Street. And that was a big thing for kids in Long Island City. We would sit there at 2 in the morning and watch, because I lived right upstairs from the Midtown Tunnel on 51st Avenue then. And they would park their trains and go through the tunnel. And that's what happened. So I love the circus. We, My father and mom, they took us to the circus every year. So what happens? The priest says, would you like tickets to the circus? So my father looked at me and he said, Nigal, you want the thing or you want to go to the circular? Because he didn't know how to say circus. So I said, let's go to the circus. We went to the payphone because we didn't have cell phones back then. We went to the payphone, 10 cents, bada bing, calling your mom. And we called and I said, mom, we got tickets to the circus. Ba -ba. Okay. We go, as we're walking in, there's a clown there making balloons. And he showed me how to make a balloon dog. And that was 1968. And so now I'm living la vida latex. But hold but, on. But wait, because I, you know I gotta, I gotta say something. Yeah. Okay. So this is what I heard. What I heard is if God didn't decide to take your thing, that wouldn't have happened. Bingo. Bingo. You know, I, I listen, I, I gotta say this. You know, I love inspiring people through our shows. No matter what who my guests are, I try to throw some inspiration in, right? I want everybody out there to hear hear this, hear what he said. Not that he wanted his his gerbil to die, not that we want any of our pets to die. And I'm not saying God made his gerbil die, but God knew something great was gonna come out of it. And Nikki listened as a child to that calling, right? And, and it, what would have happened if you didn't listen? And what would have happened if your dad wasn't open to the circus? And what, but God knew you would listen. That's why he put that in your way, okay? He gives us all gifts and it's up to us to utilize them and figure them out and do them. Because now look at all the kids you're making happy and I'm going to just say something else and, you know, not, um, 2020, okay, was a tough year for everybody, right? And, and we're still not out of the woods, but you've made so many people smile through that. You know, you've helped so many children, especially, and, and adults, because we all giggle at your nonsense. You know, I see, listen, even your, your silly video, videos of you in the snow, in your shorts, having coffee outside the delis. Listen, I am cracking up laughing when I see these. I need your videos. You're amazing. And thank you for doing that, you fool. Thank you. Thank you. I have, you know, I have a lot of friends right now. Uh, and uh, like everybody out there, I have a lot of friends uh, that are battling some issues. Um, and and uh, some of them are, are watching right now, and a leader, and I love you, and and Mich Michelle, I love you, and, and just just a lot of my friends, Franklin, and I, I battle with you. I pray for you every day. You know, I have a, a dear cousin Michael in Florida that I, I love more more than anything, and Josephine, and I, I pray for all of them every day because and, and I go. And I try to call them. I try to make them laugh. And yes. this is this is why, you know, I think God put me on this earth to make people laugh. And, yes. you know, and I make my mom laugh. My mom laughs every morning. I tell her something very funny when I call her 9 o'clock every morning. Um, 
I make a laugh. I want to make people laugh because la laughter is, is just smiles, laughter. And I'll, I'll tell you, I don't know if this happened to you, Jerry. When I hit 50, I became so emotional. I became so emotional. I was never an emotional guy. When I hit 50, I today my friend Dolly sent on, on Instagram, had her grandson reading my book on Instagram, and I'm bawling like a little, I'm like, you gotta, you gotta be kidding me. And it's just, I don't know, but I, I think it's tears of joy. Uh, you know, uh, it's just, I, I, I cry so easy now, you know, just with happiness, with happiness. So. I was the opposite. I always was emotional. And as I've gotten a little bit older, I've learned how to curb that when needed. Because okay. my emotions would take over. And I wouldn't make the best decisions based on my emotions. So I've learned how to curb them a little bit until whatever the situation is, is handled. Ah, oh, that, that's, that's great. Like my grandkids, when they, you know, I FaceTime with them because they live in Florida. They, they just make me melt. You know, pop, pop, when you come to see me, pop, 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 I got your book. You know, and it's just, <laughs> I love my kids. I love my grandkids. And it's 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 a good cry. It's a good cry. My wife is a master at knitting and crochet, and she's a master. She makes these beautiful pieces, and I, she can make this ginormous piece that she spent three days on, and she'll find one stitch in the middle that I can't see, and she'll go, I got to start it over, and she rips it apart, the whole thing that she spent, and I sit there and I go, <laughs> Be no, tell her, don't do that. Donate that one. <laughs> it, it, it's amazing. It's just amazing. But uh, mm -hmm. I, I love life and, and it's just, it, it's just so amazing. I, and I try to help people. If I see somebody down, I just, I just try to, uh, to, to make them, make them happy. My, my friend recently opened up a coffee shop and people would call me, go, Hey Nick, you're doing all these commercials. You own that coffee shop. And I said, no, one day, the very first day I walked there, the name of the place is Eto. So I went, Eto, oh, Eto, Eto, Eto. And people started, he goes, Nick, you left. People came in and started singing. And, and this is, this is what I want. You That's know? it. I don't know if it's a Long Island City thing or what, or I don't know, our personalities or whatever. But my daughter and brother laugh at me. It doesn't matter where we go. I know someone in there. And I've brought them tons of business. And they'll be like, they, they'll scream across the store over the counter, Jer, Jer, you know? Listen, I, I got to tell you a cute, funny little story. So near me okay one of the stores near me whole foods in princeton 20 minutes away this beautiful young black woman worked there and she worked behind the deli so i would be there getting all my vegan food whatever so she saw me at least once or twice a week for some reason she called me miss tony miss tony hi miss tony i never corrected her because all I cared about was her smile and calling me Ms. Tony. It was fine with me. So a couple years go by, at least two, and I write my book, and I wanted to give her one as a gift. <laughs> so I go in, and I said, my book is finished, because we talked about it. And I said, and I have a gift for you, and I signed it. She's like all excited. She comes running from around the counter, gives me a hug. I hand her my book. She looks at it, Nikki, and she goes... <laughs> Huh? She goes, your name's not Miss Tony. <laughs> she goes, it's Miss Jerry. And I go, and listen, I don't want you to call, you call me Miss Tony. So to this day, when she sees me, she runs and yells, Miss Tony, Miss Tony. Oh. And uh, so listen, I'm like you. I, I love people. I don't care what businesses I will, you know, promote the crap out of their businesses. People think I'm, I'm like looking for something. And I'm like, no. looking for what? No. And I'm like, no, share your stuff on my Facebook wall. I don't care as long as it's not anti-God or, you know, they know me. And I'm like, share your stuff. I just told the company, put your stuff once a day on my, are you sure? I'm like, why is that hurting me? You know yeah. what I mean? 
So I'm like I, that too, man. I love you for that. I love people. And I, I want, you know, because of the balloon business, um, and I, I teach balloons at conventions, uh, you get to meet people from all over the world. And I think that was part of the reason that my book did so well. I think because when I put it up, my balloon friends from around the world. So now I'm a world known author. <laughs> and I, I have to tell you, you came up with a funny story. My son and I were going to Africa. We got off the plane in Africa. And just as we got off the plane, a guy goes, hey, Nick the Balloonatic. My Get son says, here. My son goes, Dad, we're 8,000 miles from home. I got to hear Nick the Balloonatic. And he walks away from me. I was hysterical laughing. I was like Eddie Murphy and coming to America. I am here. Nick, I have to tell you something. I have a friend from Africa, I couldn't get my book to my friend. I couldn't, they wouldn't deliver it to Africa. He's oh, here really? now in the States. Wow. So I didn't get it yet. It's, at, it's there waiting for him at my friend's house in Florida for refresh recovery, okay? And he came from Africa a month ago. He's doing stuff with refresh recovery and I was able to send him my book. From Africa, he wanted my book. Is that, you just mentioned Africa, and I'm like, you're kidding me. Wow, and they can't get it? Oh, maybe I'll take a bunch of your books, put them in my suitcase, and I'll be on To Catch a Smuggler on they National could. Geographic. I'll be sneaking in Jerry Petito they books. Couldn't, they couldn't ship them to Africa. I was really sad about that for right now. But anyway, yeah. he's, he's getting my book in the mail. It's already delivered. He's got to go to the post office there, and, he's, and he'll have my book. But from Africa, is that funny or what? Wow, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. So, and I'll tell you one more silly little thing about Australia. You know, I have a lot of friends. There. I have hundreds of friends there. I've been there. They've been here, blah, blah, blah. When my book first came out, my best friend in the whole wide world, Peter, him and his family, they wanted to be the first ones to get my book. Well, yeah. at the time, it was this small book, right? And it was nine ninety nine. So, of course, he had to get a bunch of them for every, all our buddies, whatever. And his shipping on this on that was over a hundred dollars. Listen, <laughs> to this day, to this day, he'll say, "Don't even bring up your book." <laughs> hundred dollar book. He paid. He paid. Yeah, it was so funny. It was so funny. You're having a steak at Lugans. <laughs> you know, but um, so what's going on? What are what else is going to happen now? I know this pandemic and all, but what do you have in the works? Well, um. I'm getting a lot of emails and messages uh, from teachers. And my wife said to me, you should do a series. And I am, uh, being that this one is, I am a first responder. And uh, teachers, uh, my friend Dana, who's a teacher, she said, you do series. This is what they like. So now my next one is, I am a balloonatic. The one after that is I am a bass player. And then my next one after that's going to be I am your friend. You mean the books. These are going to be the, the titles. Books. It's going to be three more books. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so the next one is going to be, it's not going to be in rhyme form like this one was. It's going to be a once upon a time book. Uh, okay. Maybe I'll get you in there, Jerry. I was going to say, I, I can help yeah. you out, baby. Long Island City. Um, so that's what I want to do. And, and the teachers, uh, as a matter of fact, the book made the, the teachers list on, on Amazon, which I was so happy. And she said, teachers like series. So if I could continue to do I am, and I would love to do one, I am a nurse, because I have to tell you, I don't talk politics because I don't like right, politics. Me neither. Me neither. But something uh, upset me. As a father of someone who has a daughter, who is a frontline worker, my daughter Kimberly, works in the ER room in John Hopkins Hospital in Florida. That was my Time Magazine cover. Okay. That's my person of the year. Those first responders, yes. those people, they were all, all, you know, and, and Jerry, if, if I can for a second, my book, if, if you get my book, everybody, I, I related, um, characters and it was just it was just so amazing Vinny, who is the police officer who commandeered my bus he's one of my best friends today yes, 20 yes. years later he's one of my best friends and i i put in the book just to show you 
there's a, if you could see closely, there's a nurse. Yep, I saw that. There's a fireman, a police officer, and a doctor. The nurse was modeled after my daughter, Kimberly. The fireman, and I'm telling you, when you're nice to people in general, Joan, the illustrator, Joan, says to me, she's from Colorado, can you send me a fireman's uniform in New York? My friend across the street, Jimmy Ippolito, he's a lieutenant in the New York City Fire Department. I called him, I said, Jimmy, by any chance, do you have a picture of yourself with your fire uh, uniform on? He said, come across. So I went across the street, by the time, and directly across the street he lives. He's wearing time, it. He was wearing it, no, okay? He took a picture. So that's, that's Jimmy, who's now a lieutenant. The 26 on his helmet, is my wife's birthday, the 26th. So I put the number 26. The, the police officer right here, a young girl named Victoria, who's a waitress at Roma View Caterings in Howard Beach. She was a waitress. She just became a police officer. And I love her. My wife loves her. She's the sweetest kid. So that, and she's a, this little redhead. And so that's the police officer. And the doctor was modeled after legendary comedian Pat Cooper, who's in the movie Analyze This and yep. Analyze That. He's yep. 92 now. He, he opened up for Sinatra in Vegas. He says to me, Nick, every time I talk to you, you have the most amazing stories. Write a book. He's the one who really, like, pushed it. And that's when this all came together. But I do dedicate it uh, in the back to um, first responders past and present. That's who my book is, is dedicated to. Tell everyone, to. like, your website, all your info now, everything. Oh, sure. If you want to find my balloons, it's www.nicktheballoonatic.com. And you can get the book on Amazon. Um, on Amazon, you could type in Nick Rotundo or I am a first responder, and the book will come up. And it's it's on Amazon. Okay, very cool. Um, so what else? We have time. What else would you like to talk about? Whatever you like, my dear friend. I, mean, I love life. This is just so cool being here with you again. Ah, oh, it's 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 great. It's amazing. Um, I love it. I before we even came on air, I went on Facebook Live and I couldn't believe how many people came on and and uh, I was telling them about the show. I love it and it's it's just it's just amazing. I, I love being and and talking and I, right here, this is so positive. This is so positive right here. It's just happy talking and uh, and and a big shout out to Ruben who put this right. Hi, baby, from Hamilton Ruben. Radio. Yes. Hamilton <laughs> Radio, Ruben, you rock, buddy. Ruben's my and, guy, and man. He he is he's amazing. You you everybody that that you have on. And it's you're an amazing, an amazing. Congratulations, by for those of you who are tuning in for the first time. This is the Hall of Famer right here, <laughs> Jerry Petito, Hall of Famer, right? There. She's amazing. She really, really is amazing. And like I said, take every day. Every day is a blessing. When I first saw Jerry, it forty years we haven't seen each other. It was like. We didn't miss a beat. We sat down at the pizzeria and we ate before we went to the studio and we talked and we laughed. And that's that's what it's about. That's what it's about. It was 50 years, kiddo, not 40. It was 50. <laughs> we didn't see each other for 50 years because I was 11 when I moved and you already moved out of our building. That's right. That's right. That's right. It was 50 years. Now that's wow. craziness. That's craziness. It's just it it's it goes too fast so just enjoy every every second enjoy every second and don't talk politics i hate it you, do not talk politics stay ever. Happy. you stay happy you keep your friends don't get involved i could hear my father saying with his italian accent if you don't want the drama no respond so if you don't want a drama don't respond i love that i love that so you know I, all right yeah, wait, yes, let's talk about that for one quick second. Um, Facebook. To me, Facebook is amazing because we have our Long Island City group. We wouldn't have not connected. 
I ha- we wouldn't have connected with a lot of people we grew up with. Think how amazing that is. So when yeah. people say, I hate the drama, I hate this, that means you're part of it maybe. Okay, because listen, I don't have no drama. I'm on Facebook. I Listen, I don't post nothing negative. I don't post nothing political. I post happy, funny things. I post my shows. That's it. Listen, my hellos, my happy birthdays, you know? I don't even read the drama. I don't even comment on it because I don't want to be part of it. And I just keep yep. going. Yep. Jerry, during this whole pandemic, I posted one thing which I didn't think was political. It was when Dr. Fauci announced that they're going to start with the vaccine. They have a vaccine. And I was watching it on a channel, and all I put on Facebook was, Dr. Fauci's on TV uh, announcing that there's a vaccine. Why isn't, why isn't this big news? Why isn't the, everybody carrying this? I meant it from my heart. A dear friend of mine for years wrote me a private message, cursed me out, and that was the last time I, I spoke to him. And it was like, it's horrible. What? What's happening? It's horrible. Yeah, yeah. I was like, it's horrible uh, what's happening. So, I, but, but, but this I want everybody so- out there to stay safe because I'm telling you, there's light. There's light at the end of the tunnel, and we're we're coming down the home stretch. I I truly believe it. I truly truly believe it. So again, tr- everybody, this is his book. Uh, okay. This is his book. Okay. Amazing. Amazing. Go to Amazon. There you go. Uh, thank you. And, and, and this, is, this is Jerry's book, which is amazing. <laughs> Jerry's book. So cute. So um, what do you want to leave everyone with today? How would you like to um, close the show? You know, I... Um, once in a while, I don't stick to any particular shows like on TV or, or anything. But, you know, I love the fact that um, Ellen, at the end of her shows, you know, she says, be kind to one another. And, it, it, you know, we're all, we're all the same. I don't care, you know, if you're black, white, Spanish, Chinese. I don't care what you are. We are all the same. We are all the same. And, and I have so many friends and so many good, good friends. And, and with, you know, it's just, like I said, smile and be kind to one person every day, every day. And watch, watch what happens. Your, your life, your whole life, it becomes your way of life. And it becomes so positive. It really becomes so positive. You know, I wake up every morning. My wife will tell you, I kiss her forehead every single morning. I I kiss her forehead. You know, I I kiss my wife. We never, you know, we, we're lucky. We don't, we don't fight. We really don't fight. And it's, it's nice. It really is. It's amazing. She's an amazing, she's an amazing lady. She keeps me grounded. You know, sometimes I'm just like uh, a horse out of the gate. I'm like, I want to go, and all she'll do, she'll be there knitting, and she looks up and she goes, Nicholas, and then I say, okay, okay, because I get so excited. Like before, I went out on air with you. I, I'm pacing because I'm, I'm ready. I wanna, you know, I want. It's gonna be positive. It's gonna be positive. It's not gonna be like I'm going in front of a judge to be sentenced. No. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pacing. I'm, I'm. It's that good anxiety, that energy level, and uh, it's like before my balloon shows. I, I pump up, uh, like Queen. The show must go on. Yes. Or something from The Greatest Showman. That music, and I just, oh, and I, I finish my shows with Let's Dance by Bowie, and I have all the kids dancing, and it's just, it's the best. It's just the best. And I, I, I want to thank everybody who tuned in to this and, and just thank you and support. Listen to Jerry's show. She does an amazing interview. She writes these amazing poems for people. She's just amazing. She really is. And I'm well, honored. I think, I think you're amazing and I'm honored that you're here with me again. Um, 
people need to understand that, you know, hurt people hurt people. So when people are rude to you or they're not nice at that moment, and I'm not saying I do not let anyone abuse me and I do not allow nonsense in my life anymore. I just don't. Okay. I never allowed abuse and I never allowed a lot of nonsense, but I don't even think I allow a little bit anymore. But I don't mean that. What I mean is if someone is having a bad day and they take it out on you without really taking it out on you, you know what I mean? Give them yeah. the benefit of the doubt because you don't know what just happened the night before. You don't know what happened that day. I was in a grocery store with my daughter a few years ago and the cashier was not nice. I'm going to tell you that cashier was not nice. I don't even remember what happened. My daughter was trying to bag my, and I looked at the cashier because I saw my daughter's miserable face and I looked at the cashier and I said, sweetie, are you having a bad day? Don't have, listen, just smile. God is good. Just smile. And do you know, she smiled. We get out to the car and my daughter says, okay, mother. She says, there is one thing I wish I was more like you. She goes, when people are rude, you're even nicer to them. I don't know how you do it, but I, I guess I wish I was like that. But right now I'm not. <laughs> well, Terry, I was in Stop and Shop doing food, uh, food shopping. And now, you know, you don't even realize because we're so used to our ways. They have arrows going down one yes. aisle. And yes. I, went, I went the wrong way. And this old lady, she had to be in her 80s. And she said, you know, like nasty. You know, look, look at the ground. Look, the arrow goes out. Why are you coming this way? I looked at her and went, I'm in the mood for love. So, and she was like, oh my God, oh my, simply. And I started pushing her cart with her. She busted out laughing. By the time she went three feet, she was laughing. And I went, I really didn't mean it. I didn't see it. She went, oh, it's okay. It's okay. And so, you know. We make mistakes. What are you going to do? Like I teach the kids the word fail. I teach the young kids when I'm doing my lectures and stuff. Fail. It's okay to fail. Fail stands for first attempt in learning. That's what it means. That's what fail stands for. First attempt in learning. So if you first don't succeed, try, try, try again. That's it. You'll, you will succeed. You know what? If you don't try, then you failed. You know, Nikki. You and I are very similar in a lot of these things because I remember as a child, I never took no for an answer. My parents wanted to choke me. Okay. So I tortured them. I had a juvenile delinquent card at 10 years old. We had to go to court. Okay. But whenever I was bad, I was either defending someone who was being bullied. I was all like, that was my me. So when I was bad, I was bad for good reasons. So, but they wanted to choke me at times because I would never take no for an answer. I would do this in, at a teacher if she was wrong, you know, whatever. But you're right about failing because this is what I tell everybody. In my entire life, since I was young, I never thought, well, what if it doesn't work out? All I ever thought was, oh, I'm doing that. I don't care. And, and my, my family would be like, what are you crazy? What if this happens? I'm like, yeah, but what if it doesn't happen? So I'm doing it, you know? And I tell everyone, if they look at it that way, they'll never be disappointed even if they fail. Because if you do everything that you want to do, so what if you fail a few times? But look at all the things you've done, right? Yep. And even That's right. When, when, even the basketball yeah, I'm sorry. player. No, even the basketball player, right? LeBron, I think it was, which one it was it? Yeah. And says all these failed shots and this and that. I mean, think about it. It, it. It's it's so true. Like my dad, when I, I was started balloons, 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 he says to me, Nick, where are you gonna go in life making balloons? I said, Dad, one day I'm gonna hit the big time. I swear, I'm gonna make it all the way to the Jerry Petito show. And look, I made it. I made it. <laughs> Me now. <laughs> because people don't understand it. a lot of Italians listen to them even me my father bought me my first beauty salon he said you wow. have to have a beauty salon because all the sisters and the aunts have them and you have to he made me go to beauty school listen I said all right just to appease him I wasn't happy 
oh my gosh, I went to art school, you know, out of high school. And he was like, what are you all gonna do a draw on a, on a piece of paper? What are you gonna do with that? You know? We're, and your see, father was a giant of a man. He was, he was. He took, my abuse, he took my abuse and let me do everything even as he's doing this to me. Yeah, hey, 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 hey. Okay, but all right. Hey, Jerry, back then we had, I told you, we had two vowels, A and O, A, O, and sometimes you. I love you. So let's, all right, so let's say goodbye to everyone in, in a really great way, and let's just let everybody out there know, share this show, please, okay? Absolutely, please share, share this show. We need people to smile. And I think my friend here, Nikki, is doing that, okay? We need people to smile. Um, Nikki, I love you, man. Um, this isn't over. Listen, we gotta get a future interview already dated. Okay, we'll get it booked for your next few books. You got it. Maybe by then I'll be pole dancing and we could do a segment on that, With balloons, a pole dance made out of balloons. Come on, because I want videos of that one. What are you kidding me? That Absolutely. Would be Oh my gosh, your poor wife. All right. Uh, but thank Jerry, you. God bless you, and, and thank thanks for having me. Everybody out there, thank you for tuning in. Please share it. Jerry has an amazing show, and thank you, thank you for tuning in. I love you guys. Thank you, thank you. Everybody share this. Okay, Ruben, baby. Thank you. All right, Ruben, baby. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Jerry Petito. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. And in time, this too shall pass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Jerry Petito taught the class. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Loves the answer, the greener grass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. One day at a time, free at last. When you don't know just what to do. Just what to do, just what to do. If what you're feeling is really true. It's really true. Really true. Just keep your ideas safe and sound. Safe and sound, safe and sound. That's exactly how change is found. Change is found, change is found. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. And in time, this too shall pass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Jerry Petito taught the class. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Loves the answer, the greener grass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. One day at a time, free at last.